All right, looks like we're back into the action here. I got some, uh, oops, gotta move that out of the way. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are once again. Sorry about that exploit being so, so cool. An, a TVT this time between League of Friendship and Team Tafarkrats. Brent hoping that his TVT is gonna be enough to knock out Yume. We'll have to see what happens here. Spotted here in the lower right corner of the map though. He's red, he's playing for Team Brent. He's actually not on a team, he plays for himself. It is Brent. His opponent from Quantic took down Puck in the last game, evened it up for the League of Friendship. In fact, is taking the lead here for the League of Friendship. It is Yumi. Oh. I'm, uh, you know what, Yumi, I I'm a little surprised, honestly. Like, Puck is such a good player, and as I was kind of muffling through that last game, I have seen, I have cast Puck firsthand, taking down players like Pult with little to no issue. So Yume's got to feel really good about that. I don't know if that was a cocky factor coming out of Puck or if something else was a factor, but either way, like, even though he went down, I, like, we really need to take a moment to acknowledge just how good that game was. He he held off so many advances. But uh, Yume versus Brent this time. This is uh, going to be a completely different game here, Doom. Yeah, TBT is always a little bit different, isn't it? Um, there's a lot of different strategies you, can, strategies you can use in the early game to punish your opponent, as we've seen in things like, you know, Maru versus Innovation. Um, but this is going to be you know, um, a pretty relatively even matchup here. Of course, Yumi has a slight edge being a Grandmaster. Um, but looking at the two builds here, they've definitely gone for, for some stark deviations. Yumi with the much earlier gas uh, than Brent. And Brent's actually going to scout this out right off the bat. You know, one thing I've learned through casting a lot of StarCraft 2, whether you're a Grandmaster, whether you're a Masters player, sometimes you're one matchup. Like, this might be Brent's best matchup. He might not be a Grandmaster, but if it's TBT, it's a specialty, going to be irrelevant. Now, <laughs> see if you're going to take a couple of hits there. Nothing too big of a deal, but uh, the big thing here goes Brent scouts that the gas was taken already. This isn't anything out of the ordinary. This is Terran being Terran, but it's really important if he clicks on it to see, hey, that was a really early gas versus a regularly timed gas. All right, so Factor going to come down here for Yumi. And not shocked to see that after he went for that Hellion-oriented build in the last game. Curious to see if that'll be his strategy here. I do know that there's a variety of drops you can do involving Marines and Hellions in the base, really catching let's, your opponent off guard. But Let's also not forget, guys, this is post-Hellbat patch. This is no longer the Hellbat Wars that TVT once was. Thank goodness. Yeah, I mean, Cloak Banshees are becoming kind of the new staple in this uh, matchup, but it's kind of a coin flip at that point. Do you go Banshee first? Do you go Viking first? Do you get an auto-counter and win? I mean, it's kind of... It's, it's, it's a little bit rougher and requires a little bit more thinking, I feel, than the old Hellbat drops, you know, just drop and win would be. Absolutely, and actually looking at the back of the base here for Yume, it looks like he may be going for those Cloak Banshees right up the bat. Tech Lab gonna go down on the factory, Starport right next to it. This, uh, you know, you know Brent, if, if he got up here and he saw the gas taken really early, this might have been an indication. I don't know if he saw that second gas or not, but either way, if he's got a lot of Marines like he's getting right now, he might be able to hold this. I mean, a scan with, like, say, seven Marines under it, you could easily take care of Banshees. Yeah, and, you know, Brent's only going to get his starport now, though, so if he wants to get a Viking out to perhaps handle that rather than use those Marines that... Definitely is going to be available to him by the time the, the Cloak Branch is going to get to his base. But he's making a couple Hellions here, and looks like he's going to try to go for a little aggression of his own, um, but just in a different different form. You know, I'm not going to lie. After watching a whole game of Yume being orange, I'm having a hard time dealing with him being blue right now. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> well, Slightly neither player, different. This is kind of cool. Neither player willing to expand just yet. Uh, sometimes you see those really greedy openings out of Terran players because they want to just get a million Marines on the field, and they'll be content dealing with whatever comes. But this Banshee with Cloak... Will not be too easy to deal with. Cloak, of course, a lot cheaper nowadays than it once was. Yeah, and this is... <laughs> feels like Wings of Liberty TVT, man. No expansions from either player. Both of them just sticking to one base, saying, I'm going to try to kill you with this strategy here. Yeah, no scouting there from Brent on the, on the Banshee, so he doesn't know it's coming, well, he's, but he's got to be thinking something's coming. He's got an Engineering Bay on the way, and this is most likely for upgrades more so than turrets, because he doesn't know this is coming, but of course the added benefit of getting turrets down going to be absolutely critical. And you may even having on a Reaper. I don't know if that's in, intentional or not. It's going to take away a little bit of his gas, um, but he does have uh, more gas while just spending it there on a tank. So, going to follow it up with the Command Center are both players, so not going to be thinking this is going to be the, the all-in style of push, but definitely going to be some type of aggression from both players as this drop is moving across the field for Brent as the Banshee 
He's got about to enter the base. And Brent well. just took all of his Marines out of the base in that medevac. He's got nothing okay. at home but trying to bank on this one Viking. turret. Okay, well, the Viking pause, but there's no detection just yet. But Brent, not only just dropping, but also elevating Hellions up. A really intelligent move here. But that tank is in a really good position. And Yume is going to... He should be able to hold this unless he messes this up pretty dearly. The Hellions are going to sneak around behind the mineral line. And, uh, yeah, SCV's just forced to evacuate right now. Meanwhile, the Banshee on the other side of the map does get killed. Manages to accrue 11 SCV kills there. Not too shabby. Yume definitely getting a lot of damage in while Brent is... He's tickled the barracks and caused a little bit of lost mining time. It's not looking too good for our Red Terran player. Yeah, 15 SCVs to 27 SCVs. Never the position you want to be in. This Banshee's actually going to flow in, fly in here, and it doesn't have that much health. And Oh, it does have a lot of health. Who am I kidding? Well, Brent can actually, he can micro the Marines if he if he does this correctly. You shouldn't really lose too many to a Banshee with a medevac above it, but it's the ground forces that are kind of scary. He's got the Hellion tier. He can take on those Marines, but he doesn't know where the tank is, and he doesn't want to get in range of it. Oh, that Banshee getting... Very oh. low on health. You know, we've been so uh, so focused on this. One big key point here is behind this, Brent's getting a Raven. This is a really intelligent investment this early in the game. You don't want to be burning scans and having to build 700 turrets just to keep up with your opponent's cloak. That Raven will pay for itself as long as it's alive on the field. Um, you just going to drop down third France center here, and but cloak. Uh, actually, Brent's going to add cloak in behind that Raven as well. Your Hellion's going to try to do some damage here in the back mirror line, and this is just a, a ploy here from Brent to just delay Yumi a little bit further and try to keep him in his base so he's not attacking him because, you know, neither player really has that many units on the field at this point in the game. Well, Brent, you, you know, the thing is, by keeping the medevac around like this, it's a constant threat. I like that he's choosing to be active, but ooh, no, nobody on top of SCVs in range of a tank. A kind of cool move if he was going for splash damage, like, in the mineral line, but... Not where the bunkers were. Meanwhile, there's three errant marines just kind of chilling. <laughs> Trying to do what they can, I guess, to hold the line. I say that with a question mark. They're on vacation. I feel like that spinning thing. Well, but Banshee, Banshee going to move in. Yeah, but he's got the raven and he's got a viking. Like, as long as Brent looks, he might accidentally find this. What, what is he doing? Because he's paying attention on the other side of the map right now. Does take out the Banshee. There we go. This is the start to a comeback to start cleaning this up. Meanwhile, interestingly enough, He's starting to get his own cloaked Banshees behind this. Yeah, that could be a really nice little switch up here, considering the fact that Yumi just simply doesn't have turrets in the main base. And, uh, you know, disrupting his economy could greatly benefit him, considering he's very far down in SEV counts right now, 24 to 33. And, uh, you know, if this Banshee doesn't get a lot of, get a lot of work in, you know, Brent's going to be hard-pressed to try to come back in this game. You know, that poor medevac trying to do what it can, but of course, Yumi's actually, I gotta give props to Yumi, he's got a really solid defense here, the tank spread is really nice, even if Brent unloaded on top of one of the tanks, he's got enough marines on his own banshees at home for Yumi to defend it, like he's not gonna take any damage. Yep, he's taking actually a, a third and fourth gas as well, so gonna be ramping up his tech here, as the game progresses, just starting stim, combat shields, and plus one on the other side of the field, Brent, I'm not sure he's actually started any upgrades yet. Well, Banshee going to do a lot of damage here. This is what Brent needs to get back into this. His early drop wasn't able to do too much. Some nice micro trying to dodge those Marines. But, of course, now the turrets come down. He's got to be careful. Meanwhile, uh... Ooh, no scans. Yeah, no, no scans. scans. So Brent's got no tech coming to home. It looks like Yumi's got a Banshee in the middle of the map. But this Banshee that Brent has at his opponent's base is doing work, man. These Marines trying to keep up with it until it runs out of energy, though. Unless it runs into, like, a random turret. Should be able to get a couple more kills off before it's done. Going to focus down on the tanks. Ooh, a really cool move, actually. As this could potentially open up a possibility of him dropping once again, but what? Doesn't finish it. Okay. Energy's about to run out, but doesn't matter. Scan is burned. And, oh, the Banshee from Brent does go down in the end. And Another that Banshee. Banshee got burned. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Like, this is kind of interesting, him following up with more Banshees. I mean, he's already he knows turrets are going to be down at this point. You know, fool yeah, me once, shame on you. The big issue here for him, though, is that Yumi has three command centers, so he's making three SCVs at a time, while Brent's only making two. So in this regard, it's just it's just going to be Yumi's control of the field here and making more and more of his economy more and more effective. But Yumi's got his own cloak banshee in the mineral line. Yeah, this uh, is uh, Brent. You know, we kind of made the joke about how this will be how this is more banshee wars than hellbat wars, and it's kind of what we're seeing here today. <laughs> kind of who can hold better, who can do better. But the big key thing is look at that worker difference. Again, mules are good, but not that good, and Brent is just struggling when it comes to the worker counts. All right, well, he's got to win this game for the Farcrats. I mean, they've only got two players beyond him 
in this match. And Yumi is making a very strong push across the field. Rifkin, while taking his third base before, before uh, you know, just as Brent's actually just starting his third command center. So, you know, there's, there's a couple things I want to point out with this studio. Both teams only have one race left in their roster. Yeah, man. Team League of Friendship has only Protoss lying in wait, and Team Tafarkrats only have Zerg lying in wait. Well, no, so, Queenie's still available for League of Friendship, and she's, she's, a, she's she, the Protoss. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Tubby and Queenie are available. Oh, Caitlyn too, my oh, bad. but Caitlyn's a Zerg. Yep. I forgot about Caitlyn, you're right. So, yep. Protoss and Zerg's lie in wait if Brent wins this game. But if Yume wins, he only has Zergs to deal with. I don't know how his TVZ is. But if it's good and he can pull off a victory here, I think his team's gonna be feeling pretty okay. But let's not forget, it's Sasquatch and Masan. Yeah, man. That would be like pulling off the ultimate gauntlet if he gets the TV, uh, TVP win, the TVT win, and the TVZ win. But he's gotta get through Brent first. And Brent's That's got a, good a decent, uh, you know, defense going on here. So he even got the Cloak Banshees for, you know, just peltering away at these units to make sure that he's not getting, you know, just contained by yeah. the Siege Tanks. There's no worse feeling as a Terran player than to be contained with your own Siege Tank line behind the opponents, but looks like that turret just took out a drop uh, in the main there from Brent, and uh, I am, he was looking pretty strong at this point. I'm not going to lie to him, I'm a little concerned about this game for Brent though, because he's been locked yeah. into his base for so long, he's not on that third base like Yume is, his upgrades as we saw are a little bit further behind, nothing too crazy or significant, but the tank count from Yume is looking rather scary as he postures here outside the third base. Yeah, I mean, he's he's behind in a lot of regards here, Rifkin. Not not only that, he's he's dead very far down the worker count here. 34 to 57. It's it's looking pretty tough to bring. It's going to be hard pressed to try to take that third base as Yumi's just simply sieging Ooh. outside. Fans, you get to try and poke away, but of course, Yumi's got a lot of Marines here. Dancing around is not going to quite work. But Brent, actually, <laughs> none of his Banshees seem to have energy. That seems to be a very deficient problem here for Mr. Brent. Mm. Got to use a Mana Potion. JK, JK. All right, it's plus two, plus two. If if Yumi just waits for plus two, plus two, and goes after oh. that, Rifkin, I mean, even if he just waits for that plus one, it could be a solid footing. He's getting a pretty good drop off here. He sneaks past the defense of the Brent. There was no turn on the right side of the base. Watch how he fought over as well. But meanwhile, that main mineral line, nice secret missile, kills most of the Marines, cleans this up, and a lot of workers killed again. Brent is stuck at 37 SCVs, almost at half the amount of his opponent. Now, he pulled yeah. a lot and kept them alive, but this is... Uh, I, again, I just feel like the map is under Yume's control right now. Brent's got to pull up a miracle if he wants to break this. Yeah, you can see it in, in the income level here. 800 to 1600, it's doubled on Yumi's side of the field. And he's making another command center rift and adding on additional reactors on definitely more production than Brent currently has in this game. And this is just smothering tactics. This, he's not even sieging the tanks outside. He's just keeping them very mobile and just making sure that his opponent doesn't take that third base. As long as he does that, he knows he's in the lead. There, there's absolutely no doubt in Yumi's mind that he's taken. He's taken a big advantage in this game. And with the upgrades about to finish up, this could be the moment where he decides to go in. Yeah, this is, again, that tank count is what's so staggering here, because Brent's tanks, he's got a good amount on the field, but they're spread out, and he's lacking those upgrades, so you can't you can't even drop, but that's the problem for Yume, too. He can't bull, he can't just bulldog his way in here and win the game. Well, maybe with the plus one siege tanks he could. I mean, that's, that's going to do a significant amount of damage, especially with the splash, but he doesn't look, feel like he's been rallying units across the field. Where are all of his reinforcements? I don't know, Doom, but uh, as a quick comment here, chats discussing why this is not during the, the Invitational. I wish we could have scheduled it differently, guys, but we had to get this underway. VODs, I think, are going to be the primary source of uh, watching when it comes to the Survivor events, but uh, I'm really glad you guys are joining us live for the first episode. But, of course, all VODs will be posted on YouTube and available through sc2links.com, so you can always check them out or tell your friends about them, because maybe they're watching Dota right now, but they're very interested in the event. They can still keep up with what's going on, but holy moly, 61 Marines, 10 Siege Tanks, Doom. And that's yeah. it. There's there's nothing, well, seven medivacs. There's not a lot of diversity in Yumi's army, but big engagement comes down. These tanks, oh, I don't think they're going to stand up too long. Brent's got not a lot of tanks left on the field. Marines can't release the forward, and Brent just took what could possibly be game-ending damage. Neither player with any Marines left on the field, but the key point is Brent doesn't have the siege tank count that Yumi currently does. Oh, that was an absolute slaughter, as we see on the field, and this command center is going to be forced to lift off. Brent has not mined from uh, third base the entire game. That This is really looking rough here. I mean, again, we got another 20 plus minute game underway here. Both players probably feeling the stress of it at this point. But the key thing here is like, I think if Brent, like, okay, let's assume Brent, okay, Brent's not in a good spot. I'm not going to try and talk him up. But if he can wear down Yume, get him ready for his teammates to knock him out, maybe, just maybe, that'll be enough. Hey, now that's some positive thinking. <laughs> well, no, but I mean, this is 
you may this was not a guy expect like taking down puck that already blew my mind taking out uh freaking brent who's actually pretty good at tvt again blowing my mind here yeah this is a, definitely a solid start for the league of friendship you know you wouldn't expect a you know the team that doesn't have the gms and the, the masters players who are like, well known in the community to to be taking such a, a significant lead but yumi definitely what? showing his chops here the quantic player well they do have that big advantage too where like suppy is benched team to far Crats cannot use yeah. suppy no matter what so it it might not seem like that big of an advantage because you know tempo kind of canceled out the fact that they had someone benched but it's who they have benched that could come into play later on but yume is uh he's again he's got to get through masan and sasquatch after this and those are two prime zerg players oh the contain lives on big scans going down for both players right now everyone wants to know where everything is <laughs> now the speck of dust will go unscouted yeah, unfortunately, looking at the Union County Station here, Brent has to know he's back behind in supply. It's 120 to 176. <laughs> this is, he's well, he's, he's kind of getting a decent flank. There's snipes off a couple tanks. It's not a lot, but it's a start. But Yumi's supply is so desperately large in a in a mirror matchup of all things, too. And let's not forget, some of Brent's supply is still sitting around his mineral line. He's trying to defend. He's got a whole dropship of Marines running across the field. Like, his army is not here to take on Yumi's army. Oh, a bit of a slaughter going down. The upgrades really coming in supreme there. A medevac of Marines can't even take on naked Marines, but a big Seeker missile goes off on the Marines. Not quite enough to demolish the army, but gets them darn low, and a couple tanks go down with it. So suddenly, Brent has an army that looks like it could potentially be back in this game. We're sitting here counting him out. The supply is still looking nothing good, but he's starting to he's starting to worm and claw his way back into this. He's trying, but that Seeker missile is like throwing a firecracker at a group of ants. <laughs> They're just going to keep coming back with more. Yeah, you're going to do damage, but is it going to be enough? I don't know. He's trying to take that third base. That's been the, the, the crucial linchpin in this game is the severe lack of economy that Brent's had. Yeah, with he's... tanks, you could pretty much defend anything for well, a getting... certain amount of time. but He's getting super starved out, and that's actually a really good point that you bring up because Yume is happily on four bases right now. He's making 10 Marines at a time. He's just pumping up to his plus two upgrades. And it's it's just, it's all happy in Yumiville right now. But, you, but Brent's actually going to sneak a couple of units around here and might catch Yumi off. Oh, for the Watchtower is just a slaughter. And these small victories that Brent is getting are being extinguished by Yumi's massive force. The blue is the water and the red is the fire. And Brent is just going to be doused in, in what I feel is moments. Again, it's like 90 plus Marines on the field, Doom. 95 yep. Marines, to be precise. Jesus. That is making a statement here in StarCraft 2 Survivor. StarCraft 2 Survivor. He'd be definitely buying some points for his team with these two great performances so far. And, I mean, these tanks are going to get cleaned up here, and it's pretty much just going to be, you know, up for Brent to two make tanks. a move in the game. But Rest in peace. Oh, actually picks them up. <laughs> yeah, it is six tanks to 13 tanks, 81 Marines to 29. Brent's got the tank lead, but the tank lead will not win you this game. It's yeah, like going know, just ultras. This would be good moves if this was the third base, but that was the fourth base he was trying to deter, and that's going to go back to, to Mining Happily here. Yumi now with plus 200 mana rolls a minute to Brent's 800, and it's... And there's no, there's, there's a couple different ways you can paint a picture, but this one is looking This one's ripped. being painted by numbers, I feel, Doom, and one of the artists doesn't realize that he has to count through 1 through 10, not 1, 8, J, 17, 4, 6. Well, this is definitely giving to Far Cross enough time to try to figure out who they do want to send out next, and it's just going to be a Zerg, we know that, you know, League of Friendship. Yeah, it's going to be a well, Zerg, but, but which one? Like, does Masan or does Sasquatch have a better, more confident appeal in their ZVT? And how much data do they have on Yumi? I mean, he's... I've he's an unknown. This. I don't think I've ever really heard of Yumi He's before. an academy he's player. No one expects this. He's doing, doing pretty Coming in here, fun. we see shrapnel going left and right. Rifles flying all over the place. You might not even see it up. Seeker missiles coming down. Can he break the lines or will Brent hold this? So many tanks are still on the field going down here quickly. A lot of Marines coming in for the reinforcement. A good game is called... Beast Mode. And that's going to be it. Man, oh man. So we're going to have to find out who comes out next. Four to Farkrats. Again, guys, they've only got two Zergs left in their roster at this point. Yeah, and they're down 2-1. Well, actually, I didn't think about this, but Yumi's on the Academy team. Masan's on Quantic Gaming. I don't know if they've interacted before. Maybe Masan has given coaching to Yume or vice versa, or they've practiced. I have no idea how Quantic Gaming works, but if that's the case, maybe Masan would be the best bet to send out next. We're going to have to see, Riffin.